Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have an early impression video on a fragrance that was very kindly given to me. A couple precious drops of an Ensar Oud fragrance. Anytime I get to smell anything from the house of Ensar, Bortnikoff, Arige La Dore, I'm basically in heaven. Uh, these have been houses that uh, are sort of mountaintop experiences, I think, for frag heads. Once you get to a certain point, there's only a couple places left to go. This is one of those places. And um, so the House of Ensar Oud has created a fragrance that you can find if you go to their website and you hover over Atelier and click on Roses, you'll actually see this as one of the options. And this is called Japanese Rose. Japanese Rose by Ensar Oud. So first of all, I have to give a special thank you to Hari, who very kindly sent this to me. Obviously, anytime I get a chance to um, to talk about something so precious, um, it's an honor. But thanks to the community, you know, it's funny, I, I listen to some of these folks who, uh, let's say, are sponsored, and I consider anyone that gets free bottles from brands to be sponsored in some way. You are getting payment in kind from those brands for what you're saying about the bottles, right? And, you know, I, uh, I hear them say things like, well, I wouldn't be able to talk about the things that I talk about if I didn't say good things about the the fragrances, the ho the houses that send me stuff, you know, if I say anything bad, they'll stop sending they'll stop sending it to me and then um and and then I won't be able to continue doing this this channel. But you know what's funny is uh I've taken the exact opposite approach and I have more samples and stuff from the community, from people like you. Uh and I wouldn't be able to I mean it's so expensive to uh, to, to load up on these, even these little samples can become very expensive. And just to give you an, a, an idea of what you're up against here, five grams of this is $300. Um, and so two and a half grams, 150 bucks. So it's not cheap at all. It's expensive stuff. And um, the biggest they sell is 10 grams, usually 600 bucks. But if you act now, $579 for 10 grams in a sturdy glass bottle. So prices are still very expensive, but this is one of the most beautiful rose fragrances I've ever smelled. Now, I have to make a disclaimer, and the disclaimer is this. I have never smelled a Japanese rose, okay? So I uh, am not going to stand up here and, you know, profess myself to be some sort of uh, rose expert or anything like that, because I'm not. I'm just a fragrance connoisseur loves perfumes, and this is one of the fragrances that fell in my lap. And But I have come to love Rose. Uh, rose is one of the fragrances that initially, uh, I thought I didn't like Rose. I stayed away from it. Actually, I bought a bottle. I actually bought this. I'll show you what I did. Um, so when I started my journey, I got a couple, I got an Amouage sample set. They came in some mini bottles. Um, and one of them was this. This is Lyric Man. And I actually smelled it. This is a fresh rose fragrance for men. But I smelled it and I went, no way could a man ever wear this. I gave it to my mother. Years later, I could not stop thinking about this fragrance. I ended up coming back and buying a full bottle after all. So, um, rose is a, is a note in perfumery that has, has really grown on me. But when you smell even this Amouage Lyric Man, while I think it's a great rose fragrance, it has nothing on the real rose autos and the rose fragrances. Like, for example, my current all-time favorite, which I'm hunting a bottle I just can't seem to find. I probably shouldn't say anything or I'll never be able to find a bottle. But uh, it's this. And I have a video up on the channel. If you want to go check it out, you can. It's under my Arige Ladore playlist. This is called Malik Al Taif. And uh, basically, it's called The King of Taif. And uh, this, so if, if you follow IFRA's regulations, IFRA says that you cannot have more than 4% of your formula be rose oil. And this has 40% pure rose oil, Taif, royal grade Taif rose oil. So, um, oh God, fuck. I, um, I have some experience with some, some roses. Again, thanks to, to my good friend, Russian Adam. And, um, I, I've gotten a chance to smell some of the autos. Like, for example, this is Indian, um, Red Rose Auto. Mm, this is, um, 
This is Indian Pink Rose. This is Iranian Rose. That's a beautiful one. Um, Iranian Rose is fantastic. So I've had a chance, actually if you go to my playlist again and click on interviews and you go to the Russian Adam interview too, um, we went through every single ingredient. He was kind enough to basically go ingredient by ingredient. So I'm only saying that um, because I'm not claiming I'm an expert, but I'm also not a novice is basically where I'm coming from. I have had a chance to experience some of the pure rose autos from across the world. Uh, and I've got some experience with some rose fragrances. Um, and, and so that's my frame of reference why I'm coming to this, but I'm not holding myself out as like a Japanese rose expert or anything like that. Um, so let's talk about the scent. Here's kind of my initial impression, and I'll read you the blurb that NSAR's website has listed. But um, I've had it on for a couple hours now. And the first thing that comes to mind is you will notice that there is this fresh lemoniness to this to this um, uh, to this particular release. And it starts off smelling actually very similar to my favorite rose fragrance of all time, which is this one. This is Taif Rose. So if you've ever smelled Taif Rose, it has this fresh sort of lemony character to it. Oh, it's beautiful. My fa Easily my favorite rose of all time. And um, you will get that in Japanese rose. When it first hits your skin, you're going to notice just how fresh. It has the lemony freshness of Taif Rose, but it has some other bits and pieces of other rose fragrances combined, in, in my estimation. So you're going to get a little bit of the fruitiness of, let's say, Russian rose, or actually, uh, if you go to Arige Ladore's uh, Instagram channel, he has a story about a fragrance called Azerbaijan Rose 1972. So it's a vintage, you know, 50 plus year old fragrance. Um, and Azerbaijan Rose 1972 has this sort of fruity character to it. And you get a little bit of this fruity pear-like, um, and we'll talk a little bit more about the fruitiness as well, but you get a little bit of that in uh, Japanese Rose. And, and finally, there are some honeyed aspects as well, which um, I don't know if, if this is... Uh, one thing I'm not 100% sure of is if this is a perfume, so if Ensar has sort of added some other things on top of it, to either increase the longevity or change the smell a little bit, or if this is pure Japanese rose auto. I don't know. It very well could be just the pure rose auto. I mean, look how, I mean, it looks like it's just a pure rose auto. Um, so yes, there is a slight honeyed aspect to it as well. And so um, I'll, let me read you the blurb and then we'll kind of go through what I think about it. And I, and I absolutely love this. I love the smell of it, but um, here's what NSAR's website has to say. It says, Japanese rose oil is among the rarest essential oils in the world. It doesn't take much to find the finest Bulgarian, Turkish, or French rose oil, but very few essential oil suppliers ever have Japanese rose oil in stock, including the most reputable companies in the world. Case in point, it took us almost four years to finally have some to offer you again. The harvests are extremely limited and its and extraction costs are higher while all the besotted rose lovers and leading perfumers stand in line calling first dibs. Rarity aside, Japanese rose is easily one of the most beautiful soul-stirring scents on earth. Enjoy its tenacious piercing aroma that puts your nose up close to early spring petals in bloom. An absolute perfumer's delight and a fragrance famous for stirring up romance at home. If you scored one of the bottles from our previous batch, which sold out in 2019, you'd be, you'd be keen to know that this harvest is more sensual than that one. Compared to that one's red color, colored darker tone, this extract is less herbaceous, clear in color, like an auto, and, believe it or not, the scent of the pure rugosa petal smells more pristine and accurately captured. Uh, and it says, you know, quick asterisk. This harvest is an indispensable ingredient in creating EO parfums. Due to the difficulty in replacing it, only a limited amount is available for sale. So there you go. Um, that is straight from the NSAR website. 
I will make the thumbnail the uh, thumbnail that he has listed when you click on it so you can see kind of what the Japanese rose looks like if, if you would like. Um, and so yeah, when you look at the thumbnail, that's going to be the Japanese rose. So, so here is sort of my take on this. So when you apply it on skin, um, and so NSAR's website says that it is a piercing smell. And I would say, uh, the beauty of this smell, honestly, almost just stops you in your tracks for the first hour, especially the first hour, first hour to two hours, let's say, cause it's been on my skin for a little over two hours now. Um, it is absolutely, they say soul stirringly beautiful and it is, it is, it is stunning. It is a stunning, I mean, uh, think about it like this. If, um, it, it can completely change your day because imagine if you're in a bad mood, right? And you've had a bad day or something and, um, you, you smell this, you smell this particular rose, this high quality rose scent, it'll instantly make you happy. It'll, it'll, it's such an amazing experience that it has the ability, I think, to alter your mood. And, um, you know, imagine, imagine this sort of scene, if you will, let me set the scene. So imagine that you are outside and the sun is shining. It is a beautiful, um, day you're surrounded by, let's say, family and friends, and you are burying your nose in one of the most lush, full, delectable, you know, just almost, the rose is almost, let's say, dripping with, with moisture, and you bury your nose inside of that rose, and you smell the most amazing rose smell in your life. How can you be upset, or how can you have a bad day doing something like that? um, in, in those times, how could you have a bad day? And that's basically the, the way that this scent hits me in, in my brain. Um, so we've established sort of the mood of the scent. This is a happy, uh, soul stirring scent as Ensar says, and it is, I mean, how can you be upset smelling such a beautiful smell as a, as a high class rose? Um, now for the connoisseur in each of us though, one thing that I will say is that um, every little detail of the scent, you can sort of try to break down and, um, you know, I make specific notes, but these are just my, my opinions and my smells. You may, you may uh, get this and, and get something completely different from it, but we have to trust our nose. We only have one nose and you're the only one that's smelling out of your nose. I'm not smelling out of your nose and you're not smelling out of mine. So these are sort of the um, the notes that I made, the little details that I made. But um, this is just, again, my unprofessional uh, opinion. I'm not some Japanese rose expert. But here's what it comes down to. So everyone who is a fragrance connoisseur, if you're watching this, you're probably either a fragrance connoisseur or you're on your way to being a fragrance connoisseur is the way I kind of see it. And we all want to be able to sort of see the gears turning, almost like looking into a clock or a watch and seeing the gears turning or, you know, peeling away the layers of uh, a rose. You could peel the petals of a, of a rose away, right? Or let's say you peel back uh, the, you peel back the, the, the blanket or the cover to see what's underneath. We all want to know how things work. And that's where this can sort of get subjective is where I'm kind of going with this, but... Um, to my nose, this is, I would say, uh, one of the most high class rose oils I've ever smelled. And, um, I do have some experience, but it can rival the Taif Rose as far as my, my opinion goes. Uh, this is one of the few rose scents that can really rival the Taif Rose and smell to me. And the reason, um, being that it has sort of that same fresh opening. And if you look at the inside of the Japanese rose and look at the picture that I put as the thumbnail or actually go to Ensar's website and take a look at the picture that he posted there. And the inside of the Taif rose and the inside of the Japanese rose, they both have this sort of very yellow prominent, what they call stigmas or stamens, depending on which part you're specifically looking at. But it's basically that very inner core of the rose that the petals kind of are around. And it has this very lemon, this very um, yellowy, lemony sort of um, uh, color to it. 
Uh, and those yellow bits inside of the flower are actually a great color representation of the way that the opening of the fragrance smells. So when you put this on your skin, um, there is a almost tea-like freshness, but not like tea bag, almost like tea leaf, almost like smelling a fresh tea leaf. Uh, and the opening of, of this rose is um, hands down, I would say, one of the most beautiful rose smells I've ever smelled in my entire life. It is um, crisp, it's clean, it has this almost citric, like um, stunning, just fresh composition when you, when you first smell. And that's one of the things that really captures me. And the same thing about the Taif Rose. It has this sort of lemony, tea-like smell about it. And that lemony, tea-like smell is just so alluring. It's so just jaw-droppingly beautiful. And along with that crisp opening, that's where you're going to get these very beautiful fruity notes that start to sort of weave their way into the composition. And I thought at first there was a bit of cherry. Um, I picked up a little bit of cherry and um, I picked up a little bit of this very green pear. Okay, so imagine like a, not like a juicy, fresh, ready to eat pear, but maybe a pear that's still a little bit um, green and needs some more time to mature, right? That's sort of the pear that came to my mind. And the pear comes across as very green. And also, you know what it could be? You, I could be sensing some of the green touches from the um, receptacle that the petals actually sit on. Uh, and sometimes, so if you look at something, if you take an example like uh, Russian Adam did a fragrance called Malik Al Taif, which I talked about earlier, something like this, right? In this fragrance, what they actually did is they picked each petal from the receptacle and set it aside and they only distilled the petals themselves. And not only did they do that, but they actually used only women. The, the owner of the Taif Rose uh, plantation, he said that he notices a difference between when, when men actually pick the flowers and when women pick the flowers. And something to do with the softness of, let's say, a woman's hand versus the rough roughness of a man's hand is what he ended up saying, is, is his reasoning for it. And whether you believe that or not, the biggest thing is they distilled only the petals, not the actual green receptacle that the petals sit on, right? And so because of that, um, it doesn't have, Malik Al Taif doesn't give off that sort of green geranium-like smell. This one does. Uh, there's a little bit of this green, um, there's a little bit of this green geranium, almost weedy, grassy-like smell that you'll get. And um, if you've seen the video that Russian Adam and I did, you know that, that I've said that whenever you smell something like this directly, the auto itself, it always gives me vibes. I always get this um, artichoke smell. Like, um, have you ever taken an artichoke and, you know, you take one of the leaf, the, the, um, the leaves off and you kind of use your teeth to like pull the meat off the artichoke, right? And it sort of leaves that green, um, earthy, you know, artichoke like, like smell. That is the green, that's the greenness that I get from the receptacle on some of these rose autos. And there's a little bit of that here, but, um... The, when you take it all together, so you have that lemoniness, that lemony tea leaf opening, right? With the apple slash pear, green pear, green apple, green pear, fruitiness, and maybe hints of Japanese cherry. Maybe that's just my imagination. Um, and you get this geranium green sort of weedy artichoke facet that all molds together. It and, and then you add just a slight touch of this honeyed, aspect. Very slight honeyed. I don't think it's as honeyed as um, some of these other roses like the Iranian rose or something like that, but or um, the sweetness of Bulgarian rose or anything like that. I don't think it's that sort of honeyed aspect, but there is a little bit of this um, of this honeyed feel to me. Just a touch. And the question that I have um, the, the biggest thing that I really don't know, and I'm, I'm guessing that this is just the Japanese rose Otto is my guess, 
That, that's all that this is, that Ansar has done nothing else to it. He hasn't added any of his oud or any other composition or anything like that is my guess. This is just strictly for the rose lovers that want to smell the individual note itself. And I've, and it's interesting seeing some of these houses sell some of these type of products because, for example, I just did a video and here's a, here is a example of some of Russian Adams' most recent work. And he released um, fragrances like this, which many of these are just one note. This one actually is not one note. This one is a little bit of a composition, the history of Kinam Oud. But um, um, many of the other offerings from this line, like for example, this one is Cambodian Oud, which I actually wore this as my scent of the day uh, on Friday when I did the live stream. I did a live stream where we talked about each particular one, but um, I wore this to work as my scent of the day. It was absolutely stunning, but this one note, it's Cambodian Oud. Um, it's a little bit of a gasoline-like accord to this. I really like this one. This is one of my favorites from the set. Uh, but but anyways, I just say that to say that uh, these houses are, are highlighting one individual note and showing you what it actually smells like. Instead of always doing a composition, they're allowing you to buy these um, products that highlight one note. And that's what I think this does. This is just the Japanese rose. It's not the name of a fragrance necessarily. It's not the name of a whole composition. It literally is Japanese rose. Otto is, is what I think it is. Now, the downsides. The biggest downside for me for this is uh, longevity, okay? If, um... If you were a, a multi-millionaire or a billionaire, you could just douse yourself in this stuff. Just every couple hours, just reapply. Uh, it is already starting to get very faint after a couple hours. But I will tell you what, from our, really it's, it's like a two hour lifespan on my skin is what it feels like. Because now it's really starting to get fainter and fainter. I can still pick it up, but it's not as beautiful or as clear, as crisp, as piercing as Ensar says on his website. Um, as, as especially the first hour, the first hour is like, you're sitting there almost drooling on it. Like, my goodness, it is so unbelievably beautiful, but it's gone in a flash. And, um, that is a big downside when you're paying $579 for 10 grams. Um, extremely limited, very rare, very similar setup to the way Russian Adam does you know, did this set here. This was, some of these bottles, there was only 50 of this bottle made for the entire world, right? And so very, very extremely limited, rare, um, you know, harvest and ingredient. And it's really for, I would say, the big time connoisseurs that really want to know um, what Japanese rose smells like. You know, what does the Japanese rose on its own smell like? So for me, it is not worth that sort of money. If it wasn't for Hari, you know, giving me some, a few precious drops to get to experience this and do a video for you guys, um, I I would I would say it's not worth it's not worth the price. It's not worth the price of admission. Even the um, let's say two and a half grams uh, for 150, I don't even think it's worth it. Even if you just really want to know what some of the finest rose oil on earth smells like, I still don't think it's worth it. Um, but maybe that's because I still have all of these beautiful rose oils that I can sort of play with on my own time. Um, but you know, I think the, the price is just very prohibitively expensive, but that's the audience that Ensar is going for. So those are really my two biggest questions. Has he added anything to this or is it just the rose auto and the longevity of this is severely lacking. But for that first hour, I will tell you this, if you're a rose lover, and let's say, you know, here's a, here's a rose fragrance, for example, that doesn't get enough love, but I, but I, uh, I absolutely love it. I think it's one of the, I think it's one of the best masculine rose fragrances of all time. This is Azaro's Actor, let's say, right? So if you like these type of rose centered fragrances, if, um, if you just, if, if you just maybe want to take the next step and see what, what does a high quality rose oil smell like on its own outside of the composition, you know, if you've never had a chance to smell some of these individual autos, um, 
then maybe this could be something to consider. But uh, that is a very tough, it's a tough sell for me. Any, for me anyways, it is. I would, I would rather have something that lasts longer, maybe even in a composition. I mean, I got this for 25 bucks or 30 bucks or something. I mean, extremely small amount of money for the, the value for money that a fragrance like this gives you from the past. Discontinued from 1989, I believe. Um, and so I really do feel like you can maybe spend your money a little bit more wisely, but for the true connoisseur that wants to really dig into the rose spectrum and maybe smell something extremely rare and unique, and I mean, Japanese rose, I, I almost never hear anyone talk about Japanese rose, to be honest with you. It's usually the Bulgarian rose and uh, all, all that good stuff, you know, that you usually hear people talk about. Also, one thing I will say that I didn't get, uh, I didn't mention earlier it just hit me because in the dry down, it does turn slightly powdery, slightly powdery. You're going to pick up a little bit of this powdery aspect to the rose, um, but mostly, like I said, it's that clean, crisp, tea-like freshness, lemony freshness. Um, it's a beautiful, fresh rose that uh, I really think can rival the Taif rose, but it's extremely, extremely expensive for what you get, and the uh, you just wish it lasts longer because the smell is just so beautiful. It's so gorgeous. It's it's almost heartbreakingly beautiful, but it's gone in in a flash. An hour an hour or two goes by like that, and then it's it. It's you got to reapply. Um, but I'll tell you what, for that hour, especially the first hour, it is heaven. It is pure heaven if you're a rose lover. So uh, I hope you appreciated the uh, quick late night insight, quick hit video. Um, if you have experience with uh, Japanese rose or any of these Ensar roses, actually. If you actually just click on that atelier and click on roses, you'll be able to see there's an entire kind of archive. You can buy Georgian Otto. You can buy Rose 1978. That's an Azerbaijan harvest. Um, uh, Rose Taif, apparently, you can buy all the way up to almost $1,000 for that Taif. Rose Otto, Rose SQ, Sultan's Rose. Um, which I think might be sold out now, but so you can go on there and buy those, um, very rare, expensive rose oils from his website as well. So if you've ever done that, um, the finest rose extracts from around the world, let me know what you think. Uh, let me know if your thoughts are kind of the same as mine. And if you've smelled Japanese rose or if you're interested in it, I'd love to hear your thoughts. So anyways, thanks to everyone who has supported me liking and subscribing and commenting and all that stuff definitely helps the channel. I, I try to respond to every single comment personally that I can. Um, you know, we're still small enough where I still can interact with each and every one of you. If you leave a message, you'll get a response from me. So appreciate uh, everyone's support. Hope to see your faces in the comments. Cheers, guys, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.